Hey everyone, welcome to Pixel Pathfinder, where we're on a journey to find the best indie games. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button for more great indie games coverage here on the channel. In this video, we're taking a look at the Steam Games Festival, Play What's Next in February. This is a festival showcasing the games that are coming up in 2021, and there are over 500 playable demos. Specifically in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the strategy tab and I'm going to be highlighting some of the demos that I think are really interesting and unique or the ones that I've played before or been really excited just to highlight some of these and kind of help you dig through what's there and find some of the good stuff or the weird stuff. Now, this isn't going to be a comprehensive video of all the strategy demos. Like I said, just kind of cherry picking the ones that I wanted to mention. So we're going to hop in here and we're going to get started with a super weird game called The Cyclist Tactics. This is a pro cycling turn based tactics game. Yes, it's a game about biking, but it's turn based. I don't know. It's super weird and I wanted to include it in this video because I don't want to be the only one who downloads this and tries to figure out how this makes any sense at all. So please, if you check this game out, let me know what you think in the comment section below because I, 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 I can't be alone in this. This just looks so weird. Next up, we have Distant Kingdoms. There's no video for this one, unfortunately, but this is a indie simulation, city building, social management style game set in a fantasy world where there are humans, dwarves, elves, and orcs. I think it looks pretty interesting. Uh, this is kind of right up my alley for something I'd want to do in a city builder. So I'm excited to check out the demo. Next, we have Draft of Darkness. This is a game that I wanted to highlight because uh, if you've been watching the channel at all, you know that I really like deck building games, especially roguelike deck building games, um, especially the turn based style ones. And Draft of Darkness is one of those that has a survival survival horror twist that you don't see very often. I don't know if it's actually going to be any good. It looks like it probably won't. But the twist on the genre is enough for me to want to uh, highlight it and check it out. Next, we have Dream Engines Nomad Cities. So this is a really interesting one that I've had my eye on for quite a while. So in this one, you are building a city, but it's also a survival style game because you are trying to defend your city in this post apocalyptic world. It sort of has a pseudo tower based tower defense type thing going on but also within your city you'll notice that there are these little like production lines assembly line type things going on so it looks like a combination of maybe a city builder and something like factorio uh, if that's something you're interested in now factorio is not really a game that i've gotten into but if you pair that with city building and also this sort of uh, tower defense survival aspect it piques my interest enough that it looks like a mishmash of things that I don't normally play, but might play if they were all together and I kind of got to try them all in the same spot. Next up, we have Across the Obelisk. So this is another deck building roguelike game, uh, which has gotten some some hype. But if I'm being honest, I can't quite tell if it's actually going to be good or just mediocre. Overall, I'm not a huge fan of the art style, but like I said, I do like roguelike deck builders. And if the mechanics in this one are pretty, pretty solid, uh, I don't hate the art style. So I definitely could get over it uh, in exchange for a pretty awesome game. So I definitely want to check this one out and see what it's all about. It has a party based system, which I do like in deck builders. And it looks like there's a leveling system and all kinds of other good stuff. It looks like it has a nice dose of RPG in here which I'm a big fan of. Next, we have Timberborn. And this is another weird one. So this is a colony simulator city builder where you play as a bunch of beavers. Uh, they are calling it Lumberpunk <laughs> is the genre for this game. And essentially, you're just building a city out of timber, out of lumber. Uh, with these beavers and you have to pay attention to river control and droughts uh, one of the big things they're touting is uh, vertical architecture so being able to build vertically uh, and consume or conserve your space 
looks really weird, but it's been getting a pretty decent response on Steam so far. So I'm definitely... It's the kind of thing you just can't pass up, you know, trying, especially when there's a free demo. So uh, I, I want to check this out and see what it's all about. Next, we have Guild of Ascension. This is a turn-based strategy game on a grid, a la Final Fantasy Tactics or Fire Emblem. And uh, it just looks kind of interesting. It's a roguelike style game. And uh, I like the graphics on this one. And to be honest, I just kind of check these games out whenever they pop up because it's a genre that I've always loved, but have not really found a lot of great games in here in recent years. So I'm always checking them out, hoping that one of them will finally be the one that really sinks its teeth into me and uh, gets me involved again. Speaking of, the Obsidian Prince is also a grid-based, turn-based tactical game with a pixel art style that has a party-based system and uses cards as part of the battle mechanic. Again, this is just another one in a genre that I normally check out and uh, hope for the best, but usually get disappointed. However, I'm going to check this one out as well because I can't help but try them. Next, we have the Commission 1920 Organized Crime Grand Strategy. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is a crime simulation grand strategy 4X game where you manage a 1920s organized crime syndicate and you're going to manage your buildings, manage your crime family, politicians, take care of your bribes, all that kind of good stuff. It's not the type of game that I traditionally play, but I like when these simulation games get a twist into a genre that isn't typical. And so seeing this come up as a 1920s organized crime style game piqued my interest enough that I decided that I wanted to check it out and try it. All right, now we're getting into the stuff that I've either played or been excited about and uh, really want to showcase to you. So. Koromon is a game that I played a demo of before, and it's essentially a different take on Pokemon. So if you have been looking for a Pokemon style game to play, Koromon actually is, in my opinion, a really good one. I think it's on par with Nexamon or Monster Sanctuary. Although having played Monster Sanctuary, that would definitely be my monster collection game of choice. And for that reason, I probably won't end up playing Koromon. But if you think something like this is more your style as opposed to the Monster Sanctuary style game, Koromon definitely, definitely looks really good. Uh, and having played the demo before, I can tell you that the monster combat is cool and just it's all around just a pretty sweet game. So definitely check it out if you like the creature collection and Pokemon style games. Next, we have Dwarf Romantic. Not sure if I said that right. But this is a very like relaxing and chill puzzle style game where you're sort of building a city or a landscape of a village, but you're doing it by placing down tiles that have rules to how you can place them. Kind of like uh, Kingdom or Settlers of Catan. If you've played either of those board games, that's what this reminds me of. I'm a big fan of board games and I like tile placement and puzzles and stuff like this. So this is right up my alley. It also helps that it looks Really, really good. So I'm excited to play this one. Next, we have Crypto Against All Odds. And I, it's kind of hard to describe this one because it involves a lot of stuff that I don't really know anything about. It's about blockchain and Bitcoin and all that kind of cryptocurrency stuff. That's where it gets its theme, which in and of itself is weird and new, I think. But the gameplay is more kind of like Plants vs. Zombies tower defense type stuff, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of. So getting into this theme that I know nothing about, so everything will feel kind of fresh and new and unique, but also having this gameplay style that I enjoy is actually really exciting. And then on top of that, they have these other little arcade mini games that you can play, like breakout style games. Uh, which you can see 
And so it just looks neat. It looks weird. It looks interesting. I definitely want to check it out and try it because it's something uh, different that I haven't seen before. Next, we have the Rift Breaker. The Rift Breaker is a game that uh, has had plenty of demos and opportunities to play the game. And I've missed every single one of them for whatever reason. But in this game, you have a mech that you run around and you fight things with. But also, at the same time, you are building up a base and you are uh, putting up towers and trying to defend your, your core as well. So it's an interesting combination of kind of like a uh, top-down, isometric uh, action game along with a base-building tower defense style game. It looks really, really awesome. I don't know why I haven't tried it up until this point, but uh, definitely going to get some time in on the demo during this festival. Next, we have Shores Unknown. So this is a CRPG, which if you're not familiar with those, CRPGs are games like Baldur's Gate or Divinity Original Sin, Divinity Original Sin where there's a lot of story, there's a lot of text, there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of deep RPG story background, kind of like in D&D, but there's also normally some turn-based tactical combat in there and strong character building as well. That's what Shores Unknown looks like, uh, though it has a more obviously indie style uh, shell for it. This looks pretty interesting. There was a demo of this before, but I did not get to play it. And I'm going to try and see if I get the time to check it out during this festival. Next, we have Black Book. Black Book is a deck building or card game. It's an RPG based in a world full of Slavic myths, which is something I'm not very familiar with. So in that aspect, it's exciting to get to experience something new and to experience this new mythology and to learn more about uh, this culture through this game. And in this game, you play as a girl who is fighting evil forces by using her black book of sorcery. It looks really interesting. And like I said, for me, getting to learn about the Slavic mythology is very, very appealing. The game looks cool. It has some very cool looking enemies and stuff too. So this is one I've been looking forward to trying out for quite a while. Next, we have Heart of Murie or Muriet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but this one is a voxel style RTS game. That just looks pretty intense and pretty cool. Uh, it is a game for people who love RTS games, but intense micromanagement stops them from playing. That is me, 100%. And it has a fantasy theme, which I'm absolutely on board with. So seeing this uh, kind of cool uh, art style, seeing the fantasy setting, and just getting that, hey, this is an RTS without the intense micromanagement, definitely got me interested. So I want to check this out. RTSs were games that I played a ton when I was growing up and I just kind of got really tired of the genre. And now even when I'm curious about the genre, I feel like there's too many action per minute requirements to play any of the new ones effectively. So I'm excited to see if this can appeal to an old guy like me. Next up, we have a game that is just absolutely bizarre. This is the Amazing American Circus, which is a deck building game, a card game about the circus, which I don't quite understand. And that's the main reason that I wanted to highlight it, because, again, this is just a weird concept. It's something new. It's something different in a genre that I almost always play any game of just to check it out and see if it's any good. So I definitely want to check this one out and see what's up. Do I think the idea is going to pan out? No. But I'm willing to give it a shot and, and check it out. Next, we have No Plan B, which is a game I'm actually really excited to try out. It reminds me a lot of Door Kickers. 
if you've seen that game or that series of games, you play as a tactical uh, squad, like a SWAT team, and you have a uh, group of characters. You kit them out and gear them up and all that kind of good stuff, and then you go in for the SWAT-style missions. It's got a brutal FTL-style campaign, community-made missions. I've really been wanting to play one of these, but... For whatever reason, they just haven't quite caught my eye enough for me to dive into them. But I really like the way that Plan B looks. I especially like this sort of like kitting out screen and stuff here. Uh, so I'm excited to play this one and finally like get a feel for this genre and figure out if it's one that I like or not. Next up, we have Floppy Nights, which is a game I'm actually pretty excited about. It reminds me a lot of Dicey Dungeons in the art style, but this is a deck building card battler game where you fight on a grid, which you'll see here in a video, but it has a very unique art style, interesting character and enemy design. Uh, overall, it just looks like the kind of like bubbly, charming stuff that I really enjoy playing and getting into. It's got a pretty cool um, soundtrack as well. And this is one that I've been wanting to get my hands on, and I think it's another demo that I passed in previous festivals, but I'm definitely going to give it a shot this time. Next, we have Despot's Game, which I put out a video for here on the channel. I wanted to encourage you guys to check this one out. I was playing a playtest that you had to register for. This demo is freely available to everyone, so if you checked out that video, be sure to check out this demo and see what you think. You could probably do better than I did. But uh, yeah, this game is incredibly cool. And I've had a lot of fun making the video for it here on the channel. And I'm excited to play the full version once it comes out. So get your hands on the demo and uh, see what you think. Next, we have Jupiter Moon's Mecha, the prologue. This is another roguelike deck building game, but this time you are actually in the cockpit of a mech, which is, again, another cool, interesting idea. And you're gonna be battling other mechs in this sort of first person view. It's just really unique the way that they have set this up. And also the animations and stuff are uh, really awesome as well. Everything's seen from the cockpit of the mech. You get to do mech upgrades and weapons like you would in any mech game. This just looks really, really freaking amazing. And I had my eye on this one and I was super excited to see there was a demo. I'm, I'm really pumped about playing this one and there will all 100% be a video for this one on the channel. Next we have Rogue Book. So this is one I've been excited about since it was announced like two years ago or something. Uh, and this one is from the creators of Feria which was a card game that I played and enjoyed, but never got too deep into. It was moderately popular. I think it still does get played a little bit, but this is basically a different take on Slay the Spire. So we have another roguelike deck builder, I know, um, but this one is by a company that has proven that they know card games. The mechanics and stuff for this one are being developed by Richard Garfield, who is the creator of Magic the Gathering, which is always a nice tag to add to your game, but has not proven to mean that the game will be good uh, in the past. In some of the board games and stuff that I've played before, they've been okay. So it's not a guarantee that it'll be awesome, but it looks very good, and I've been excited about this one for quite a while. Been trying to get in the beta, trying to get in the alpha, trying to get to play, haven't been invited. And now there's a demo, so I get to play. So I'm pretty excited about that. Next, they they put out a demo for Loop Hero. I'm so excited. This game made my top 21 most anticipated games of 2021, and there's actually a demo out for it now. So that is incredibly exciting. I can't wait to dive into this one, and there will 100% be a video for it here on the channel uh, within the next week or two. Next up, we have Dwarf, another game that made my top 21 most anticipated games of 2021. I did play the demo for this one at a festival, a previous Steam's festival. And uh, I didn't play too far because I just knew like really early on 
that I like this game, but I want to get into it and actually uh, play it and make a full video for the channel so you guys can reference that and check it out in the future. Definitely try to get your hands on this one and play it if you're a fan of Zelda-style games and or tower defense. And then finally, we have the last spell. Uh, this also was very high up on my top 21 most anticipated games for 2021. This is one that I actually have a video ready to go for to put up on the channel, so that'll be out pretty soon. This game is incredibly fun. I really, really enjoy this, and uh, I will 100% be picking up the full version of this game once it's actually released, and I want to encourage you guys to check it out and play the demo while it's available. That said, this one is one that has a prologue that's just readily available as well, so there's not as big of a rush to play this one as there are some of the others. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for this video. Let me know if you think that I missed a super standout game, a super exciting game on the strategy tab over here on the Steams and Game Festival. Let me know if you're excited about any of the games that I showed in this video or if there's any in particular that you really want to see a video on. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. That definitely helps. Leave a comment if you do both. YouTube loves that and I love that as well. Don't forget if you're new here, smash that subscribe button for more great indie games coverage here on the channel. Hope you guys are having fun with whatever indie games you're playing and I hope that I've helped you discover some new indie games to play. I'll see you all on the next video.